Hi there. My name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. In the last lecture, we introduced the concept of state variable filters, and we looked at implementations in the Oberheim SEM and the Oberheim OBX. The circuits in the OBX are pretty similar to the circuits in the SEM. The main difference is that while the SEM uses just a potentiometer to control the resonance, the OBX uses a voltage-controlled amplifier in the feedback loop, as would be necessary for a polyphonic synthesizer with digital patch storage. In this lecture, we'll be looking at some other state variable filter implementations. So here's an example of a state variable filter from the SSM 2040 datasheet. I'm not actually aware of this design being used in any synthesizers, but here it is. Now, a quirk about the SSM 2040, if you'll remember, is that the positive inputs of the operational transconductance amplifiers are internally grounded. So that saves cost on the package. Um, let me write some little current inputs in here just to remind us that these are indeed OTAs and not op amps. The thing labeled op amp is obviously an op amp. Anyway, let's take a look here. We have the buffers that are built into the 2040. We have integration caps. The output current of the OTAs is being fed directly into the cap to ground, not the feedback loop of an op amp that would give us an inversion. But the signal here is coming into the negative terminal. So each of these variable gain integration stages in which I would include that voltage divider in front with the R3 and the 200 ohm resistors, these are inverting stages. So the output of the first stage, when it comes back around, this needs to go into the positive input of the op amp because this first stage itself is doing the inversion. Because we have two inverting stages in sequence, the combination of the two is non-inverting. So the output from the second stage here, when it's fed back, it has to go to the negative input. So here we have the high pass output, the band pass output, and the low pass output. This would be the unnormalized bandpass output without that division by Q because it's coming in before we do this one over Q operation here, which here is being very simply done with a voltage divider. If you wanted to make Q variable, you would use a pot in here somewhere. Notice that they haven't bothered to put in any nonlinearities in the feedback loop. One other little quirk here I want to mention is that the input itself is going into the negative terminal. So that means the entire filter structure is inverting. Basically take all of the transfer functions we had and stick a minus sign in front. The fact that the input is going to the negative terminal just means there's a minus sign in front of the transfer function and it doesn't do anything weird to what is happening with the feedback. Actually, let's go back and take a look at the original Oberheim SEM circuit. Notice that all of the inputs here are going to the negative terminal. So the voltage controlled filter in the Oberheim SEM is overall an inverting filter. All of the transfer functions have a minus sign. Now this filter structure is fairly generic. You could implement these blocks in a number of different ways. Here's a fairly hard to read example from a rare weird synth called the EML 101. And here they're not using an OTA. They're sort of using half of an OTA. They're using the differential pair, but they don't have the current mirror. Essentially what they're doing here is they're relying on these resistors to convert currents out of the collectors of the BJTs to voltages. Now in this differential structure, the collectors will have a common DC bias offset of some sort, but they'll have the signal out of phase. So this is kind of like that final stage of the Moog ladder filter where Moog would have some sort of differencing amp on the other side to subtract that common DC bias, but then basically take whatever the signal is on one of these halves and then multiply it by two. What the designers of the EML 101 are doing is they're actually using a differential input integrator here. So the fact that you see two capacitors here might lead you to think that this itself is some sort of simple two-pole filter. But if you actually work out the transfer function for this in terms of the voltages here, you'll see that things combine in a particular way. So this winds up basically having a 1 over S kind of transfer function. This is interesting. I haven't seen this in any other synthesizer design. Anyway, fortunately, Marjan Urukar here redrew the schematic in a much nicer, easier to read fashion. 
So we could do a lot of thinking and look at this whole thing and try to figure out if these variable gain integration stages are inverting or non-inverting. But we can take a lazy route by noticing that the feedback loop from this first stage is going to the positive input. Because it's doing that, we know that this stage has to be inverting because that first feedback loop has to be inverting. And once we know that, we know that this is also an inverting stage because these two stages are identical. So when we go through the two stages, the inversions cancel. So when we take this back here, we have to go to the negative input. Let's see, we have the high pass, band pass, and low pass outputs. If you are building this, I would recommend putting in some output impedances like a 1K resistor or something for short circuit protection. Now there's something really weird and interesting happening with this Q control here. Notice that both the first and second order feedback loops are involved with this. I'm not gonna try to analyze that more here, but it might be a fun exercise for the reader. Anyway, let's see what else is going on. Oh, the input is coming in here. Notice that the input is going to the positive input here and not the negative input. So this whole filter is non-inverting, unlike the various filters we've seen so far. If you look at application note 701 from Sound Semiconductor, you'll see a state variable filter using their SSI 2164 chip. And here you can see the two integrators. Let's see, the 2164, both the SSI and SSM original, are current in, current out devices, unlike OTAs that are voltage in, current out. Let's see, they're using a capacitor in the feedback loop to turn the output current back into a voltage. And I think, unlike with OTAs, the 2164s are really, really picky about having their output held at a virtual ground. And I can't remember if the 2164 itself is inverting or not, but by the fact that we know that the feedback path here is going to the positive terminal, we know that this has to be an inverting stage. So two inverting stages in sequence are not inverting, and so the second integration stage feeds back to the negative input. Oh, they're also doing a trick down here of combining the high pass and low pass outputs with a potentiometer. So if you actually set this to the middle, you're combining them both equally to get a notch filter, or you could sweep this to one side or the other to get more high pass or low pass. You have to be careful with combining filter outputs like that, because remember that there's not just magnitudes going on. Those filter functions also have phases, and sometimes as the phase is changing for various frequencies, these may combine in ways that are a bit unintuitive. There's also a guitar pedal called the Mutron 3. Here's the build documentation for the Neutron, which is a clone of that effect. And this is a state variable filter. We have an integration stage here, and we have an integration stage here except here, instead of using OTAs or something like the 2164, the designer of the Mutron decided to use a light-dependent resistor that is being fed by a light source, and you can change the gains of the stages by changing the amount of light being fed on the light-dependent resistors. The control current here is actually being fed by an envelope follower, so as you play your guitar louder, the filter opens up. And as the guitar sound rings out, the filter closes back down. Curtis made the CEM3350, which was a dual state variable filter chip that was used in the Rhodes Chroma. I think the Rhodes Chroma is actually better thought of as an ARP design. There are many examples of state variable filters in the wild that aren't voltage controlled. It's sort of a go-to design for when you need a second-order filter that's controlled with just a potentiometer. We've already seen examples of using a potentiometer and the feedback coming from the first integration stage. And then you can use a ganged potentiometer that controls two resistances at once to control the gain of the integrators to control omega n. It's used in the URI 545 parametric equalizer. And it's used in the resonator of the polymogue.